On July 1st, 2021, Delhi experienced a heat wave when the maximum temperature rose to 43.5 degrees Celsius. At the same time, Ganganagar in West Rajasthan reported India's highest temperature of 44.5 degrees Celsius. Some pockets of Punjab, Haryana, Chandigarh, Delhi, North Rajasthan and West Uttar Pradesh still continue to face heat wave conditions. This issue is now prevalent world over. But the world is not only getting hotter, but also more wetter or humid. We usually consider a dry bulb temperature to describe how hot or cold a place is. Scientists, however, have been stressing upon taking into account humidity and other factors to assess how weather conditions will affect human health and activity. Humidity is measured as wet bulb temperature. Factoring in humidity along with heat, called the heat index, helps us determine what the temperature actually feels like. You may have noticed this in your mobile phones and apps as well. Humidity combined with heat is deadlier for human health and well-being. Currently, one phenomena is severely testing human tolerance of this heat-humidity balance, climate change. Humans with their sweat-based cooling systems have been well designed to beat the heat. But there's a limit to the level of heat and humidity we can cope with. A wet bulb temperature or WBT of 35 degrees Celsius mark is considered the maximum limit of humidity that humans can handle. Beyond this, the body can no longer effectively cool itself via perspiration. Wet bulb temperature, which is when the dry air cannot be cooled further down by adding moisture, is at 32 degrees. Humans cannot actually do any physical activities. They need to lie down and rest. They are not possible to do. And if it crosses 35, it's almost fatal. It's human body cannot take it because human body cannot release the heat which is being generated by our bodily systems and then it just fails to function. Dehran, home to the headquarters of the Saudi Arabian oil company Aramco, recorded one of the highest index. In July 2003, the dry bulb temperature in the city reached 42 degrees Celsius with a wet bulb temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. These numbers may sound modest, but they are not. This technically means a heat index of 81 degrees Celsius, an extremely dangerous condition with imminent heat strokes. The dangers of the heat and humidity together is that it makes you unproductive, makes your body not function properly and it's very unhealthy and very high levels of it can actually have very dire uh, health consequences for people even healthy people. Karachi's killer heat wave of 2015 recorded a wet bulb temperature of just below 30 degrees Celsius. The same year, WBT in Andhra Pradesh reached 30 degrees Celsius, killing 2,500 people. During this year's heat wave in April, the temperature in Chennai's Nungambakkam weather station clocked a sizzling 41.6 degrees Celsius. The WBT value reached 30 degrees Celsius. Currently, most of India experiences potentially deadly heat and humidity combinations 12 to 66 days annually. This number becomes threefold for hotspots on the east coast such as Sundarbans, Kolkata and Katak. According to a recent study by IMD and IITM, the heat index recorded over the last 60 years has shown a gradual increase. 25 major cities in India, including New Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad and Lucknow have recorded very hot in the summer and monsoon heat indices. If this is the current situation, what would the near future conditions be like? Most of North India, even Middle East and rest of the desert regions in the world have been relying traditionally on evaporative cooling like the wind towers, desert coolers, fountains to keep themselves comfortable during the summer. But with this rising, rising wet bulb temperature, it's becoming increasingly difficult to use these systems. In fact, in most of the regions, they have become useless. And the only easily available alternative to keep oneself comfortable during these high humidity and high heat period is air conditioning. 
Presently, the safety margins for the hottest and the most humid places continue to shrink. Studies have also indicated that wet bulb temperatures could regularly tip over 35 degrees Celsius if the world crosses the 2 degrees Celsius warming limit which was set out in the Paris Agreement in 2015. Many tropical, subtropical and some desert areas are likely to be affected by increasing wet bulb temperatures with many areas around the world being made uninhabitable. Let us list a few. The source of much of the world's oil and gas, the Arabian Gulf region. Here, cities like Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Doha, Tehran and Bandar Abbas are likely to have extreme conditions. By 2071 to 2100, these cities will approach and exceed the wet bulb 35 degrees Celsius limit for more than 6 hours a day. Regions vulnerable to increasing temperature and humidity. This includes Southeast Asia, Southeastern USA, Northern Australia, Southern China, Eurasia, Southern Europe, Central Africa, and Latin America. Under the IPCC RCP 8.5 emission scenarios, by 2081 to 2100, air temperatures will rise by 2.6 to 4.8 degrees Celsius. The number of hot and humid days will increase to 229 in Chennai by 2050. This number will shoot up to a whopping 309 days by the year 2100. So far, the instances of crossing 35 degrees Celsius wet bulb temperature have been brief but consequential. People at such times have heavily relied on artificial cooling methods, mostly air conditioning. However, this would not only increase the energy demand substantially, but also abandon the most vulnerable members of society, especially those who have to venture outside to earn their living. Hence, this solution piles up onto the growing burdens of adapting to climate change. Moreover, it may further exacerbate socio-economic inequalities in many countries that cannot afford this energy-intensive adaptation. With this rising wet bulb, one needs to think about this vulnerable population which cannot afford an air conditioner and even those who can afford an air conditioner can, aren't, don't have the regular supply of power to run these air conditioners. How will they earn their living during this heat period? How will they survive and how will, what will happen to their well-being and their health is a major concern. The only way to avoid being carried further and more frequently into uncharted heat territory is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to net zero. Researchers also suggest that heat and humidity in a large portion of the tropics will stay within habitable levels if the increase in global temperature due to climate change is controlled. The limit needs to be set to 1.5 or 2 degrees Celsius compared to the past 40 years. In the short term, there is a need to redesign buildings and urban spaces to better shelter people from this humid heat. This would require considerable stress on proper ventilation and shading. The emergence of unprecedented heat and humidity beyond what our physiology can tolerate could be just the tip of the iceberg. A warmer and wetter world is definitely dangerous for the human body, but it also has a potential to generate climate extremes that may be beyond human comprehension.